Hey YouTube, welcome to my world. In today's video, I have uh, a Saturday project that I gotta do uh, in the house. So I figure I'd take you guys along. We'll do a little backstory of how I ended up where I'm at today. Um, I'm actually in my, in my shed right now. A lot of stuff up in here. I, I gotta clean this place out too. Uh, but we'll talk about how I ended up uh, where I'm at today as I do this uh, ductwork job for my house. Uh, I basically have to, uh, I want to install two new um, return grills because in the summertime it gets really hot upstairs and we have one return in the hallway and that kind of like pulls the heat from the hallway but it doesn't really do it for the rooms, for the front two bedrooms. So I'm gonna add two returns to the front two bedrooms to make sure this summer it's not gonna be boiling upstairs which causes the ACA, the H which causes the HVAC system to work harder and you know your power bill goes up. So that uh, alleviates some of that heat that builds up in the front two bedrooms. I just wanna go over how I got here and you know, what drives me to, to, to this point. And uh, uh, you guys get to see me do some HVAC stuff. So it's a, uh, shouldn't take too long. I've done this a thousand times before, so it's nothing new to me. I actually should have done it four or five months ago. That's how long I've had these materials, but it was baking hot in my attic and I didn't feel like getting up there recreationally <laughs> but uh it's cool right now it's a saturday it's in january it's nice and cool so i'm gonna go ahead and knock her out today last week was the truck this week hvac and next week i got something planned as well so come along with me and uh we'll go ahead and knock this little job out it's kind of dark up here even though it's midday um i should have done this job some time ago i am adding two new returns to my upstairs i am adding returns on the top i'm gonna have to add them both on the top actually um because of the way my ductwork is but uh and eventually i'm gonna change this system out because she's quite old um and i guess we'll talk about how i ended up in um a food truck business and not doing HVAC. So, I am on the opposite side of where I was before. Um, so in 2017, I had a plan. Uh, I was actually operating my carpet cleaning business at the time and uh, I wanted to eventually get into a food trailer. So, I decided to shut the carpet cleaning down, which at the time I had lost one of my biggest contracts, so it kind of forced me to go into survivor mode. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a job. And at this particular time, I was adamant against jobs just because of who I am um, and what I like to do. So, but at the same time, I knew it was something that I had to do at that particular time. So I, I shut down the carpet cleaning and I started working at a, a, a landscaper. Yeah, landscapers sucked. Uh, they were all over the place. They're still a big company here. I see them all the time, but their management was just terrible. I had a friend at the time that was working as a plumber. He was a plumber at the time. Uh, I actually met him during my carpet cleaning days and uh, we became good friends. And so he uh, got an opportunity to go to uh, a big, uh, HVAC plumbing company and when they had an opening it just so happened to coincide with the time that I was shutting down my carpet cleaning and he put my name in the hat and I got an interview like immediately so I went there and I had no HVAC experience and they said well we can teach you HVAC are you willing to learn and I was like yeah of course yeah I really want to learn HVAC mind you I had probably three attempts to go to a community college to try and get into HVAC and it never worked with my schedule, you know, kids, daycare, and regular work, I just wasn't able to do it. So uh, I got that opportunity to jump into that field and I took it. I was already on the outs with my carpet cleaning anyway, so it didn't make any a big deal to me. <sighs> so I took that and started HVAC. So, but when I started it, I had a particular plan in mind. That was the thing about it. I didn't just start it um, not knowing what I was gonna do or trying to make that a career path, even though it is, and it's a great one. 
I started it with a plan in mind to create the lunch trailer. So what I've done right here is <laughs> my pilot bit fell through, but that's the little hole right there. Oh, well. Now I gotta crawl back over the unit so I can go see where my pilot hole is. And judging from where my um, ceiling fan is in the vent on the back of the master bedroom wall, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be square or straight or anything like that, it just has to work. But I need it to be right up against this joist so I can have something to nail into because this house uh, built in the 70s is uh, 24 on center in the, in the uh, attic and I have 14 by 14 boxes so I got to have something to nail it to. That's the hole, my little pilot bit that I drilled so you can see it. So that's the hole and I'm roughly about 25 inches from the wall. So the ceiling fan is right here. That's what I seen in the attic. So what I'm going to do is go 14 inches this way, 14 inches over and make, make the box like that. So ooh, I'm tired. I haven't done this in a while. So actually that's a good pilot hole right there. And I got to do the same in the boys bedroom, but that's on the front side. I'm going to tackle this back side first because it's hard for me to get back there. I'm a tall guy, so, and it's a tight squeeze. So it's hard for me to get back there. So what I'm gonna do is tackle the backside first, and then after I tackle the backside, put the box in, attach the duck, and get it over to where the unit is, then I'll start working on that side, just because everything is on the backside, and it's so much easier if I just knock it all out first. So I, I know where my main stud is, so what I'm gonna do is come over a little bit and just cut me a decent sized square so I can see uh, the stud. And then once I make the uh, a decent sized hole and see exactly where the stud is, then from here I'll start measuring over 14 and a quarter so I can get the proper measurement for the box that's gotta go up in there for the return. Feel the, uh, the stud in there now. Make sure I get an accurate measurement of the box. I actually got the light on up there so you can see up in the attic. What well, you've seen that before actually. So, so all I have to do now, it's all right if I'm over a little bit, doesn't matter. I'll just be in this realm. So yeah, it's looking good. So now I'll measure it out and uh, cut the rest of the hole for the box. Finished with that, 
now I gotta see if the box fits and do some trimming. I know I'm gonna have to do some trimming. Yeah, this way. I'm gonna have to do some trimming this way. So I'm gonna go get the box so I can see what I need to trim to make it fit. Okay, so it looks like I'm about a quarter of an inch off this back side, and I'm gonna cut probably a little bit off this side just to make it fit up easier. And then as far as the box is concerned that's going up in there, that's the eight inch collar for it. I'm gonna cut a hole, uh, cut that hole on there before I put that up in the, in the ceiling. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. So I just uh, finished trimming and uh, let's see if it fits. Yep. Okay, so now I'm gonna nail it in. Only thing is I left the screws in the attic, so I'll be back. Since there's absolutely no restrictions for me putting this box up in the attic, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the collar to it while I'm on the ground because once I get up into the attic on this particular side, I have to crawl over the unit. So the less things I gotta take to get back there, the better. The issue of this part not standing up, staying up in the wall, so I have this side tacked in. What I ended up doing is going to the shed. I got some extra wood, so what I'm going to do is put this on the inside and then screw into it. I can do that from up there, though. I can screw into the wood to make sure that side stays up above the ceiling. And uh, once I do that, then down here is pretty much done. So what I'm going to do now is go up into the attic and start the process up there. I got a bunch of tools to take up there and then uh, I have the other side to do. All right, so that's what that's looking like in the attic. So all I have to do is take flex, run from there to up here. And I'm going to have the two eights on the top because I can't put them on the sides because of the way this unit is. So I just got to run the flex from over there, don't forget to do the 
the same thing on the opposite side for the opposite one. This side is uh, pretty much done, so I don't have to come back to this side. Uh, I don't have to come back to this side to finish anything. So the box is in. I had to put a block over here. Let me uh, turn my light on. I had to put a block over here so that side doesn't sag down. Um, the grill actually gets nailed to this box, so it'll hold. I'm not. Don't have any issue there. One of the things I'm also going to have to do in this attic is put some new insulation because the insulation is uh, not nearly as thick as it should be. Um, I think it's supposed to be, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how high it's supposed to be, but this is not enough insulation for the attic. And one of the reasons why the upstairs gets hot and cold because of the insulation up here. Um, so hopefully I can do that over this summer. That's my plan anyway. Well, back to the story. Um, so I had a, a, a three-year plan for HVAC and in that three-year plan I wanted to learn as much about it as I could so I, I, I hopped into the field very eager very anxious I remember my first day I ended up with a headache just because I was trying to absorb too much knowledge at one time I ended up with a headache that day uh, but my goal for HVAC was to learn this trade and learn it uh, 100%. You never can be 100%, but I'm pretty proficient for the time that I've spent in this field. I was with one partner and uh, he was teaching me, but I felt I wasn't getting everything that I could uh, get from him. So uh, one of the guys ended up getting hurt and he needed somebody strong to be able to lift some of these units up in the attics like like mine um so i uh, i petitioned to him hey listen let's let's uh let's kind of make a pact here i'll help you to make sure you don't get hurt and you teach me what you know uh he, he was at the time i think he was probably like 27 years in the field so uh, he was like all right <clears throat> we ended up taking it to the supervisor and he didn't want to do it at first and i think it's because he knew that eventually i will be moving on uh which, you know, that's his issue, that's not mine. So I ended up getting with this particular, the, my second partner. From there, he basically just threw me into the fire and ended up just dumping knowledge on me, which I'm grateful for. Uh, I still talk to him to this day, he's a really good friend of mine. Um, but it really uh, kick-started my knowledge as far as HVAC. And I learned a lot and I did a lot and by within seven months I was a lead as a, as a uh, installer and like I said I had a three-year plan with HVAC so my goal was to hurry up and become a lead because that's where the money's at and then with that money I was able to save up money uh, to then turn around and do my trailer idea so that was the whole purpose of me going so hard in it but at the same time I wanted to learn the field as well I, I wasn't you know trying to skip out on the field and disrespect the field uh, I really liked HVAC I tried to get into it for years just wasn't able to so the plan was uh, at the end of 2020 this is 2017 now at the end of 2020 I said no more jobs for me uh, and that's just because I'm just a staunch entrepreneur so I said, no more jobs for me. I'm not working nobody else's job by the end of 2020. I'll give myself to the end of 2020. December 31st, 2020, I'm done. Uh, so it ended up being three years of, you know, hard work. I enjoyed a lot of it. Um, some of it I didn't enjoy, some of the people anyway. The work itself is actually kind of fun. I, I, I enjoy doing the stuff and I still do it on the side. But um, 
it ended up just being, you know, a part of my plans. You know, when you are looking for greatness and you're looking to make yourself better, there's 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 trouble. Not trouble, but there's 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 hard times and you have to go through them. If you don't go through them, then you don't deserve what's on the other side of that. So there's hard times that you have to go through. And once you go through those hard times, which that's one of the things I want to showcase on this channel is that there are hard times. You, we, we show on social media the, the limelight, the beautiful part of people's existence, but you don't know what they went through when they were hungry, nobody believed in them. There's that part that that's not glamorous. And when you, when you don't see that part or don't hear about that part, you think it's all peachy keen and you can just start and bada boom, bada bang, just like with this lunch trailer. I have to go sit for hours, sit for hours and wait for one customer, you know, but eventually I know if I put in that time, something's going to come out of it. It will change. I'm going to cut from the attic so that dust won't be all over my face. And then uh, this one should be just as easy as the last. I've already marked out my holes down in the room and uh, just got to cut it and poke the uh, box up in here and then cut the hole and do the same thing as I did because it's going to have the same issue on this side. Uh, put a piece of wood so it can be stable and that'll be it. Alright, so I got that one in and uh, this job is getting close to coming to an end. So all I have to do is make the two holes over there and connect those two and I got to put the, uh, the grill body up on this side. Uh, but that's easy. Just a couple screws and that's done. So basically just drill those holes, connect those two, and it's a wrap. is finished um, now back to the story okay where was I so come 2020 
this that fantastic year we all will remember for so be, for being so wonderful uh, I still have my plans intact even though everything was going on economically uh, as you can see there's still ways to make money. there's still ways to make money even in a pandemic and food was one of them so I thought of this three years ago it's not like I decided to do it because of the pandemic and and uh, fast food workers were considered essential or anything like that it was something that I had thought about a long time ago and as of 2020 December 31st I said no more employment so I was still actually working in December uh, still at uh, an, an employer and I was actually out because I had hurt my back and I was I was out for roughly three and a half months and I went back December 23rd I was supposed to go back but then I had to go out of town so while I was out of town, my employer sent me an email saying, <clears throat> this is on December 30th, saying, Warren, we will no longer uh, need your services. I was like, okay. Sounds bad, but okay. You know, I was already on my path anyway. And I might not have pulled the plug just because of the position that I've been in and all the things that I've acquired since I was young and I was just so ready to jump out. I might not have jumped out, but uh, the Heavenly Father made the choice for me. He said, you're out. You said you were out, now you're out. And here I am. Um, it's scary because I'm not young like I used to be. <clears throat> and my body's not as young as, you, as it used to be. And um, I have so much more stuff now and family and things to take care of. So it definitely is scary. But at the same time, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will so sometimes you got to make that leap of faith and just jump out and I didn't particularly jump out this time but I was more ready to jump out than any time that I had jumped out in my life so here we are uh, and there's a lot of stories out there like that that's the thing about it I, I hear so many stories of people that at the last minute you know things didn't look right but then they turned out because they still have faith and still believed in themselves so that's where we are so that's what this channel was about uh, everything I do I'm gonna start putting it on film because I do some amazing things and I meet so many amazing people and I want to start showcasing some of those people to you so that's where we are this job is done and uh, I'm getting out of this attic because uh, my body's not built for this anymore peace